What have you heard about ethanol? Other than addressing and supporting good preventative maintenance, why is ethanol blamed first when experiencing engine problems? Let's take a closer look. During recent fuel testing, sample bottles, which contained 80% benzene components commonly found in gasoline, started showing obvious changes when their caps started to pop off as a result of swelling to the silicone seals in the caps. As you can see here, ethanol has no effect on silicone after being stored for the same length of time compared to the samples from St. Louis, Wichita, and Indianapolis. So why are so many small engine mechanics being told ethanol creates all these issues? It only takes a few experiments with gasoline and ethanol separately to show just how much confusion there is on some of these very simple issues. On average, 25% of gasoline contains some form of benzene. Benzene is the most toxic part of gasoline, and there are multiple problems with having these components in our fuel supply. You will see how some of these toxic benzene components can attack plastic and fuel lines. But did you know that others cause carbon deposits in your engine and increase carbon emissions out of your car's tailpipe? And that due to this incomplete combustion, more detergents are added to gasoline just to keep your car running? It was discovered that samples taken from Kansas City, Missouri had benzene levels above the legal limit. This seven-day time lapse shows base fuel that the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, uses for vehicle emission certification requirements with various benzene components added. This fuel is commonly called indoline. Note that ethanol is not present in any of these samples. As you can see, these bottles swell and distort, allowing fuel to leak directly through their plastic walls. By adding different forms of benzene, the time it takes for these plastic bottles to swell and leak may vary. And this is the result after three weeks. It should be noted that when both benzene and toluene are increased, the leak rate of the bottle is increased as well. As soon as one begins to understand these seemingly small details in testing, it will become quite apparent how test data can be manipulated. In this seven-day time lapse, we show splash blending, which is simply adding ethanol to the same EPA certification, or indoline. The distortion and leakage in the bottles containing gasoline is slowed down significantly by adding ethanol. And as you can see on the far right, the bottle containing 100% ethanol resulted in no swelling or distortion. The bottle on the far left is EPA certification fuel, indoline, simply with toluene added, which means the two bottles on the left have no ethanol content. And this is the result after three weeks. The simple addition of ethanol to the EPA certification fuel slows down the rate in which the bottles will distort and leak. We also soak tested various fuel system components for small engines. One component was a metric fuel hose, which is common to several brands of small engine used for lawn care. These three test samples were all cut from the same replacement hose purchased in bulk from a local small engine repair facility. One obvious issue when soak testing this fuel hose is just how much shrinkage and hardening can occur in such a short amount of time. Since soaking penetrates both the inside and outside of this fuel line, significant damage was observed in as little as four weeks. The measurements for this fuel hose indicated a reduction in diameter of 15%, as well as 15% loss in weight. This occurred in both 100% gasoline with no ethanol present and in samples with ethanol and gasoline blends. Sample A was not soak tested in any fuel, but sample B and C were soak tested for four weeks in a 100% gasoline fuel with no ethanol present. After 30 minutes with pre-measured weights added to the end of each hose, you could say this picture is worth a thousand words. Sample lines B and C appear to have the same response to the 100% gasoline soak testing. An additional weight was added to sample C to show how hard these fuel lines can get being exposed to pure gasoline. And this is the result after 10 days. Now, if you were the most profitable industry in the world, could you manipulate the outcome of fuel testing to make it look like your product is not the problem? Most certainly. So how does this get overlooked so many times by so many people? When reviewing the fuel testing data from multiple studies, it was found that when ethanol was added, the gasoline base fuel itself was changed for the test as well. So why can't ethanol be simply added when evaluating ethanol's true benefits? In this particular study, dealing with fuel system hardware, why did the 100% gasoline fuel with no ethanol added, or E0, 
have the lowest amount of benzene and toluene present? The answer to that is simple. Oil companies controlled the formulas being tested, and they were able to control the results. How ironic that even in 1939, Henry Ford was criticized by the American Petroleum Institute for his support of clean, high-octane gasoline blended with ethanol. It is time everyone understands the truth about what really affects engine components. Those who insist ethanol is to blame for most any of these engine component issues today truly has oil on their hands.